Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming along. Um, so in the next 20 minutes, my plan is to show you how I built this dashboard. Um, and this is trying to give you an idea of how you can build real-time, responsive dashboards with data entry that then appear straight back in the dashboard. Uh, and I think I'm going to try and do it all in 20 minutes. So I built this demo originally for um, the Gartner Bake Off um, uh, event that they do at their summit, um, where they get a bunch of different vendors on, st on stage, and we all show off the, the, uh, the products. And they wanted to talk a little bit about real time. Um, and so I built this. this the, the data set they gave us was all about loneliness and what makes people lonely. And it was really depressing. Uh, so I wanted to do something a bit about what makes people happy as well. And so I said, OK, well, I'm going to make this, this dashboard. Uh, and I'm going to have a survey in it embedded in the dashboard so I can ask people, where are they from? So I'm going to choose, let's try Sao Paulo, because it's got space on the map. Um, Outside of watching BI demos, what makes you happy? Drinking tea, because I'm English. I can submit that. And I'm using Flow behind the scenes, throws it up through Azure. We do a bit of machine learning, and it pushes it back into the Power BI dashboard. So you saw the little bubble up here just there. So simple demo. It's doing some term extraction to, to tell us what are people saying makes them happy, some sentiment analysis. It's determ well, determining where, where the person uh, says they're from. That's a bit of a cheat. I'll show you that as well. Um, but this ability to embed a form in a dashboard, write data into it, and have it show straight up in the, on the visuals is really useful for a whole range of different um, scenarios, whether it's kind of capturing people's feedback, whether it's these kind of surveys, whether it's, I mean, you could extend this and say, OK, rather than having, having somebody manually entering data into the form, it could be data that's coming from anywhere, whether it's from some other system, whether it's from, from some sensors, whether it's emails or tweets, whatever. And you can take this pattern and kind of extend it in, in, in a bunch of different ways. So um, let me walk through the different components and how we built this. Okay. So the form itself is using Microsoft Forms. And if you go to forms.office.com, there's a whole environment here. It's great for setting up quick surveys, gathering people's feedback. Um, it's totally free. This is one of those Microsoft things that we Give away. Everybody loves it. Um, and so you can create a new survey or a new quiz, set up what questions you want, specify the types of answers. Um, and there's a few different types. So you can have kind of these, these sort of radio choices. You can have free text fields. Um, you can decide whether it's a short or a long answer, and it will determine how many characters the, they can use, um, whether or not they re it's required. You can even do things like branching. So you can have quite complex surveys as well. Um, and that's what I use to, to, uh, to create this kind of capture form. Like I said, it's about uh, what makes people happy. So I have my happiness survey. I don't know what this is. Okay. Wow, the internet's really struggling this morning. This is. Okay, 20 minutes might be a little optimistic if all my pages take 30 <laughs> seconds to load. <laughs> Really? Wow. OK, this is, I'll give it one more go. Oh, wow. OK, um, Okay. so I showed you one. I showed you how you can create the survey. You'll trust, have to trust me that that one exists. Well, you saw it, so you saw me filling it in. Um, but the great thing about, the, uh, about these surveys is that when you then hit share, you can send it in an email link to anybody, um, or you can get an embed uh, code, just uh, like an iframe that you can then go and stick in an, any other application. And that's what I was doing to embed it into the dashboard. So, um, OK, it's not going to load. Fine. So the way we capture all of the uh, input to those forms is using Flow. So um, when you come to flow.microsoft.com, you're going to land on a page that looks a little bit like this, or well, the home page. You go to My Flows, you can see all the things that have been, um, uh, been created. And I've got this one called Happiness Form. And this is the thing that's actually sort of processing the information when somebody submits it. If I hit Edit, I'll just quickly show you kind of what it does. So the input is looking, for, looking at forms, and it's identifying that, hey, I've got, this, uh, I've got this form. When somebody submits a response to it, to each of those responses, I'm going to do some different operations. I'm going to get all the details of the response, so the different fields that somebody typed in. I'm going to do some sentiment detection, some key phrase analysis, and then 
on the results, because I'm going to have multiple phrases, I'm going to do this kind of loop over them, and I'm going to add them into a Power BI data set. So I'll go through and kind of uh, show you how I build all these bits. This is working much better. Maybe it's just forms. That's not my product. It's fine. I can say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, so uh, you can create these flows, um, and there's a whole range of different templates. How many of you have used Flow? Yeah, everybody. Good, or most people, anyway. Uh, OK, so there's a whole range of different templates that are out there. I actually found one that, um, see if they've made one that does Forms as Power BI. Yeah, look, here you go. There's a template that's already sort of set up that does almost exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, so it shows you know, the range of templates that are out there. So it's really simple to get started with these ones. Um, yeah, continue. And it'll already be set up. And it'll just say, OK, so you've already authenticated the form, so we need to just choose the right one from it. So the happiness survey was the top one. And then it automatically goes and picks up, OK, well, what are the different fields that are available for me? Uh, it's this form. And then if I was to add a new step in here, I can go choose a different action um, and then pick up the fields from, from the form. Now, um, I'm going to remove this uh, Power BI one. I'm going to put something else. Up. I can leave it for now. So I can add another action in here. And what I was using to do the sentiment analysis and the key phrase extraction was the Azure machine learning platform. Um, so if you look for Azure, in fact, you can even just search for the, the thing you want, sentiment analysis, if I could spell it right, sentiment. And you'll see there's some text analytics functions. So I'm going to use text analytics. I'm going to do some sentiment detection. And then it's going to say, OK, what text do you want to analyze? So I'm going to get this from the field that was submitted in the form. And you see Flow gives me the things over on the right-hand side. So uh, I'm going to uh, uh, analyze the sentiment of this outside of watching BI demos, what makes you the happiest. So you're just choosing the fields that you want and adding those in. Now, I can go through and do the same thing for the key phrase extraction. Um, and then ultimately, I'm going to have in my flow a, a set of fields that I want to push into Power BI. Now, the challenge is that, or the thing that I would recommend if you think about doing this, is make sure you think about all the fields that you're going to want to put into your Power BI model up front. Because the next step, where we actually go and create the Power BI data set, it's a bit of a pain. And it's a real pain if you want to go and edit them afterwards. You kind of you create it once, and you kind of can't edit the fields. You have to delete the data set and rebuild it. Um, the number of times that I've done built demos around this process, and you, know, you end up building two or three data sets by the time you've finished anyway. So either expect to build something and then throw it away and build another one, or make sure you plan it ahead. OK, so on the Power BI side, I need to know what works, uh, workspace and data set I'm going to connect to. I haven't created one yet, so let's go do that. So over in Power BI, um, find the workspace that, that you want to create your data set into. Uh, hit this Create button, uh, and you can choose a streaming data set. And the streaming data set is the crucial bit. Because this tells Power BI, OK, when data gets loaded into this data set, go and update any visuals that are connected to it. Any reports or any dashboards that have been connected to this need to be updated. And you can use a, a, a few different uh, sources. I'm going to use the API. Give it a name. So this is my 9 AM demo. Who put this on at 9 AM? Right, and now I need to say, OK, what fields are going to be available in this data set? And this is what I mean about. I need to know this up front, because once you set this, you can't edit them. So I'm going to just use um, uh, my phrases. You know, I might have my uh, date that it was entered as a date time, and my sentiment score. The, the sentiment scoring piece that you get back from Azure comes back as a number from 0 to 1. Uh, so I'm going to put a number in here. And you'll see you get this little block of JSON. So if you were writing, a, a, like developing an application, that was going to use this, this uh, data set, that's the sort of sample data that you're going to, you, you would be, or the structure of the data that you'd be submitting. Now, given that we're not doing that, we're doing it all through this GUI, we don't need to worry about that. It's great. The last thing I'd suggest you turn on is this historic data analysis. Um, this means that these streaming data sets, they are designed for this kind of real-time update. Uh, and we actually only keep about half an hour's worth of data. We'll throw it out after that, unless you turn this on. This will then persist it into a Power BI data set and keep it indefinitely. So hit Create. Data set gets set up, hopefully. There we go. Scheme has been created. Uh, and now back over in Flow, I can say, OK, 
pick my workspace, pick my data sets. So uh, where did I put this again? <laughs> the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit. Choose the data set, and we should see my 9 AM demo in here. There we go. Good. I'm glad that worked. The data set automatically has one table created in it um, for real-time data. You'll always find that whenever you create one of these uh, uh, streaming data sets, it always pushes it in like that. And you can see the three fields that I did, uh, uh, defined show up here as well. So now I'm going to choose, OK, what, what fields from my form and from my um, uh, Azure Machine Learning output do I want to put into these fields in the model? So I'm going to put my key phrases. Oh, I didn't actually get a key phrase from it in the end. Let's just put this one in. I'm uh, going to use the date. Oh, OK, so my, my date, I actually want to get as an expression. So Flow's expression language gives us a whole range of different things that I can do in terms of getting dates and times and concatenating fields and putting conditional logic and the like in there. Um, but they also have a date function, uh, now, UTC now, which gives us just the current date. And then I'm going to have my sentiment score, which is my decimal between 0 and 1. So I hit save, and hopefully it tells me my flow is ready. Um, so now I'm actually going to have two flows. I've got the, the real one that I had set up before, and I've now got this one as well that's also going to be listening to the same form. So it might be interesting to see, see if they both work. Um, if I go back, I can see my, um, uh, see my flow. I can start you know, monitoring it here, make sure the connections are all set up and everything. One thing I didn't talk about, actually, was setting up the Azure Machine Learning connection. Yeah, I should talk about this bit. OK, so when you first add a, uh, one of these text analytics or this uh, key phrase analysis uh, uh, steps in Flow, it'll ask you to make a connection up to Azure. So you do need to go and set, sign up for Azure and set up that machine learning connection. Um, there are some great blogs. I was going to point out this one. Um, I'm going to tweet a bunch of links afterwards. How, how many of you are on Twitter? Quite a lot, but not as many as I was hoping. Everybody should get on Twitter, because the Power BI community on Twitter is fantastic. The Power Platform community in general on Twitter is fantastic. If you've got any questions, you can ask folks out there. Somebody will give you an answer. So I'm going to tweet a bunch of the links about um, uh, uh, more details about this afterwards. Um, so start following me, it's will underscore mi77, uh, and, and you can find me on there. OK, so um, I was going to show you this one. I should have had this open. Um, this one here. Was it that one? Ah. When I looked before, it was, the first, it was the first blog that came up. I'm not sure if it was these guys or not. Anyway, I'll find it and tweet it out later. Um, so there's a little connection that you need to set up between Flow and uh, uh, the Azure Machine Learning. It's that easy to just kind of authenticate with it. Uh, and then you can start using it in your flows. So if I go back to my other one, oh, I'd set up before. You can see a history of all the runs that it's done. You can test it out here. Um, but hey, it's ready to go now. So on the Power BI side, having created this data set, I need to build some visuals and some, um, uh, uh, some dashboards on top of it. Let's just quickly put something in so that I can um, see the data. So where am I from? Where are we? Atlanta. <laughs> Do too much traveling. Other demos. OK. So if I go back to my other flow now, uh, let's do the, use the 9 AM one again. We should see one of the runs appears down here in a second, I'm hoping. Uh. Did it not work? Thank you. OK. Well, fortunately, I already had one set up, so we can use that. Why did that not run? OK, fine. I'm not going to try and debug it here. Um, so I've got my happiness data set, which has already got some data in it. So the first step is to build a report on top of it. Um, and hopefully, you're all familiar with building Power BI reports and building visuals on top of this. And there's two things that you can do here. You can either do it through the web browser and build the, oh, maybe it's because my internet connection's fallen over again. You can either build it through the browser, um, build visuals just in the Power BI service. 
But what I'd recommend you do is use Power BI Desktop and connect it to that data set. Um, and the reason I suggest doing that is that it gives you, it means that you can create measures on top of it. So if you want to do any more calculations on top of the data, you can do that through Power BI Desktop. Even though I'm not editing the model that's up in the Power BI service, I can still create some of these calculations. So when you set up, the, set up a new report, you go to Get Data, choose from a Power BI data set, and then it will let you browse through your workspaces um, to pick the, data, pick the streaming data set. So you can see the one I've connected to here. I've got my happiness key terms, et cetera, but I've also got some calculations that I added on top of it. So I wanted to know, you know, uh, I had that score of whether it, people were in the USA or in the rest of the world to work out where people are happiest. Um, uh, I also did some, on the, uh, some uh, calculations on the time. So the timestamp that came from, um, uh, came from Flow was the UTC date. And I wanted to have something showing me what was the latest submission, just so that I could see in my visuals, OK, when was this thing submitted? Um, what I did for the USA versus rest of the world, I actually didn't bother trying to do any geocoding. I kind of cheated and just said, if you, if you submitted it on an odd second, you're considered USA. And if you submitted it on an even second, you're considered rest of the world. So that was a total hack and a bit of a cheat. But the principle is actually quite useful, because it means that, hey, you can build these calculations on top of that data um, uh, when you're building your visuals as well. So then I started building some visuals up. So my location, I put on a map. and. Um, Hopefully, it will load. Is it not my internet? Is it me? OK. Any of these? Well, it must be the internet, because I'm connecting to a data set that's up in the cloud. So, okay. so I can see my total sentiment score. Maybe I change that to an average. Look at it by location as well. My map data is not updating for some reason. Helps if I put location in my OK, hey, good. We're getting some data. That's good. So you can see all my locations. And I started to create some more things on top of this, put some tables and things on top. And then when you've finished building this report, publish that up to the Power BI service. And you can start pinning things to a dashboard. So like I said, um, do that through desktop so you can add some calculations and things on top. It's usually, uh, usually uh, a good suggestion. And then when it comes to you know, creating the dashboard, it's just like creating any other, any other dashboard, right? Um, so I can pin, pin some of those things to my dashboards. Um, I'll go over to this one again. I spent a bit of time you know, formatting it, resizing things appropriately. But this thing now is just automatically hooked up based on that flow and pushing that data through the streaming data set. They'll always update straight away. What I did for the form, the final thing that I was going to show here, um, is that when I, when I come to create a new tile, I've got an option here. Let me zoom back in so you can see. Uh, to add a new tile to this dashboard, not just pinning it from a report, but creating tiles as well. And I just use this web content one. So like I said, when you're on the form site, you can just grab a URL to embed anywhere. And uh, you paste it into this embed code. And that gives you this kind of iframe onto the, onto the form that I had on the left-hand side. So it's a really simple way of. Uh, embedding that kind of data into this. The other thing that I did was make that form, the form, you know, it's, it's publicly accessible. I kind of thought about doing this for Power Apps as well, because I could embed a Power App inside a Power BI report and have that as my data entry screen. But I can't then publish that and make it available to everybody anonymously. You've got to be authenticated to Power Apps. So I preferred using forms just because it meant that you can, I can stick it on the internet and anybody can use this. Um, but then I had the problem of, well, I can't share this dashboard externally, because you can't share, make dashboards publicly available, only reports. So I'm hoping either the Power BI team or the Power Apps team, sooner or later, will fix one or, two, one or the other of those problems so that I can make the whole thing publicly available. Uh, OK, so that was kind of everything. I kind of walked through all of it there. So we set up a form. We set up a flow to listen to submissions, do that Azure machine learning pump it into the Power BI data set, and then visualize it on a dashboard, all in about 20 minutes, give or take some technical issues with the internet. Thanks very much for coming along. <laughs>